Um, bueno, buenas tardes. Good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me here. It's a great honor. A lot of people don't know us. We're consultants. We work in Catalonia and the Basque Country, and basically we work in technical experience, public administration, for interesting, for improving sorting. We're also we're communicators for rolling out new systems specializing in sorting and the environment. The issue of the subjects of this presentation is sorting, successful sorting systems. As you know, sorting is not just a question of have different colors in the street. What really matters are the results because the results and don't always go with putting the different bins out. So we specialize in successful systems both in Spain and beyond Spain in the area of sorting. The current situation, without going into any detail, because we've heard quite a lot about it in several presentations. With this slide, what it shows is the need to improve we have ambitious targets with state planning and also EU directives and the circular economy packages that we've heard about. These are the objectives. And this slide, we talk about sorting. And the concept is preparing for reuse and recycling. But they're highly ambitious objectives, not just here in the Canary Islands. As we can say here, the results are fairly low for sorting. With the reform, in terms of weight, this is not just true in the Canary Islands. The Spanish average is slightly better than here, but there's still a long way to go in order to meet the targets set by Europe and even from our national plan. So there's a lot of work to be done for us and for the entire sector, for you, for everybody working in this sector. The positive reading of this is that there's a lot of work to be done and we need resources to do it. In grey we have the reject fraction or the all-in-one as you call it. This is the mixed bag which is still represents most of the uh, waste that's been collected. This data is 2013 but it's probably improved since, since, since then. It's around 10-15% but we need to, re to reduce it. The question came up today of how to improve this and this is where my presentation is going here we have a graph of the results in sorting by weight in terms of weight in the european countries right at the top which is close to 70 percent we have austria germany belgium and the netherlands remember this the average for these countries we're talking about sorting of up to 60% or more of the weight of the waste. Here in the Canary Islands, we're around 11, 12, 13%. We're right at the bottom of the ranking, as is Spain. So this is an ex shows us exactly how far we have to go. So the easy question is, OK, why don't we go to these countries and see what they do? Obviously, looking at other countries, has its dangers as well. You can't just copy it. Each country has their own customs and characteristics, and also they would generate slightly different waste, although in the end it would be very similar to other countries. But there are many differences, so you can't just copy and paste these models. But maybe we can take some of the lessons from this. This graph will go over very quickly. We have the cost of charge of landfill, the highest is 140 uh, per ton, uh, but in Guipuscoa it's around 180. Sweden and Luxembourg is highly expensive, as we know here. We're talking about 40, 50 uh, euros a ton on this island. Some other islands have lower charges. The reason I'm showing you this slide, because it shows the relations of the cost of tipping, i.e. collecting unsorted waste, that hasn't been um, sorted at source, and the results of sorted waste that's collected that's on the other axis. The reason I'm showing you this, because we, we need about 25 years of awareness campaigns and socioeconomic evolution in order to improve this. 
As we've heard, there are also instruments that are far more direct. Communica communication is essential, but there are other far more direct mechanisms, which is the economic cost of all of this. As they said in Mallorca, a country or a region or a municipality, the landfill charge is very expensive. We don't even have, that's without the environmental arguments. So with the crisis, Spain has really put its skates on and they started recycling. And that's why we're moving towards the circular economy, which suggests that all countries start increasing landfill and incineration charges. It's not just a question of mentality, although this is part of the problem. It's a financial incentive will help enormously. The current model here and in most of Spain, we have these containers these photos are taken in Tenerife and one was taken in Las Palmas. We have all kinds of collection in containers, lateral containers, um, buried containers, surface, curbside, wherever you like. But they're, they're open, they're in the street. Normally, you can open the lid to put large waste in. You could put a microwave in there. You can put whatever you like in these containers. So, as we've also heard, we're only dependent on the will of the person who's generating the waste and what he wants to do with it. From a logical point of view, we can see this must have a ceiling. This system of collection is a voluntary, 100% voluntary. The only people who are going to sort are the ones who want to sort. So what we can see in these graphs, that from places where they have what's called the fifth container, to, con uh, to collect organic matter. So we can't push this up. The model has a ceiling it, and it depends on people's will. So we get to the point where the communication, which is always necessary, is a black hole for investment and we do not increase the amount of sorting because there's always going to be a sector of the population which, as it's voluntary, they are not going to sort their rubbish. We, we have voluntary sorters. We go to the containers wherever we want. So the generator of the waste has no responsibility whatsoever. The responsibility, once we put our waste in the container, then the responsibility is of the person who picks up the container. So these are the exhausted models as far as results go. So what we need is co-responsibility in collection of the co-generators. This graph shows us the results of sorting by model. All of this is in the presentation when you download it. These are the, the results. And depending on the model, the models, the results of the, of the bottom are the, we have all the municipalities on the left, on the vertical axis, and the results on the horizontal axis by sorting in the different municipalities. So, which system are most successful in sorting in Europe and the world? These two concepts, those that reduce the we individualize the contribution i.e. The, the generator feels that he's being checked and therefore he assumes responsibility for his own for the waste that he generates these are the results so what techniques will take us to our objective obviously if containers are open 24 hours a day with large lids is not the way to go we have to reduce um, make it non-anonymous, make it personal. Here we have some examples of cities. One has a population of 1.3 million in Milan, which has door-to-door -door collection. This is a classical method that's been used in the Central European countries for, make, for, making, for achieving these results because they individualize the collection and therefore generators identify with the problem and therefore take action and they sort. Parma is another city with excellent results and Contarina is a region in the Veneto in Italy which has excellent results. It generates 
less than 50, on around 50 kilos per inhabitant year with a door-to-door -door collection system. These are photos of the door-to-door -door collection. For many of you, you might think that there's quite a powerful impact from this. But it is only there for a couple of hours. The containers are all out on the street, This are all 24 hours a day. These are out there for a couple of hours, then it's gone. So it's a large but limited impact. But this is not the only sorting system. This is Milan. There are other systems for passing the responsibility on. This is what we're starting to see in Spain. This is the Basque country with door-to-door um, selection. Each one has their own bin, the same way as you have your own post box, the same is true in the Catalonia. Closed emergency areas for people who cannot adapt to the time of door-to-door -door collection. And finally, there's another mechanism that shifts the responsibility to the, general, to the generator. This is a mixed model. People who don't like the door-to-door -door collection, we have other mechanisms. They're not necessarily easier and that is to use close, closing technologies on curbside containers. Here, we identify the, the generator, which you can do with a, a padlock. This is a municipality of 800,000 people. Every, everybody's container is closed with a padlock. In this case, there are 12 families who can go to one of the numbered containers, each container can only be used by 12 families. The sorting rate is now 70% because we've limited the use of the reject fraction. As I said the, this morning, our enemy is the reject fraction. So what you want to do is to limit the use of the containers in places that are going to generate this reject fraction. So finally, we can use technology once again we reduce anonymity. We have cars to identify the users. The top right photo shows um, a card from Flanders. They're consuming the amount of the balance on the card every time you use the container. And then you have to top it up. So here we've got the, uh, the concept of pay as you throw. Users feel identified with this and the results are generally good. And finally, in Europe, the closed container which is another way of sharing responsibility with generators. You find this in closed containers. In Spain at the moment, the first the initial experiences have been rolled out in the Basque country. That, and they're doing it with side-loading containers, containers. This has its risks as the containers suffer more, but some material is stabilizing. This is a photo that was taken this week in a municipality of 10,000 inhabitants in Guipuscoa where they've closed the two containers, where you've got the reject fraction and the organic fraction. You can't just close one because they'll, they'll just dump everything in the one. Then they reduce the size of the lid of the other three of paper, packaging and glass, so you can't throw everything in. And the results here, we've got 10,000 inhabitants and 80% of them are sorting their waste. By limiting the use of the reject fraction, the organic fraction, and they've introduced some kind of identification of the waste generator and this effect you can be done with door to door and this gives you excellent results in sorting and you'll improve it in many percentage points thank you very much